Ever since the introduction of the Apple Pencil, there has been a wave of architects moving from a desktop workflow to an iPad workflow. And now SketchUp has given that revolution a huge boost with the introduction of SketchUp for iPad. That's all well and good, but how will the pencil change the way you did things in desktop SketchUp? And will you be able to catch up with all the new things you have to learn? Hi, I'm James Akers. I'm a registered architect, a full-time professional renderer, a professor of iPad drawing for UCLA. I teach how to get started in Morfolio Trace and how to draw to scale in Procreate. But in this SketchUp for iPad video, Mike Tadros, a senior project manager at SketchUp for iPad, guided me through one of the most basic operations we all need to learn how to do in SketchUp. So take it away, Mike. And so here, if I you know, long press on this image, as a Google search, like this this Google image search, and save the image. It's just been saved to my photo library, a camera roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if we go back to SketchUp now and start another new file, only or right out of the, right out of the gate here, I can just click to create a new SketchUp file that will live in this project up in the cloud. So I'll tap that. I'll tap create new to create a new file, and then we'll go to insert image, insert image as an object from the photo library and choose that Corbusier floor plan. I can drag to scale that up. You're, uh, you're making my day here. We're really going to build this now? Yeah, what the heck, you know? Why not? <laughs> that's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> is this the right one or did you want to? Uh, well, no, one? that's this is even better. I, like I, in my wildest dreams, I would not have thought you let me ask for that, you know what I mean? So this is fantastic. Hey, this either works or it doesn't, man, you know? <laughs> well, I love your confidence and not even hesitating, you know? Yeah, well, let's see. I think the trick, the next trick, and maybe you can help me with this, is gonna be to approximate what we think the distance between these two columns. I just, I wanted to show you something, Mike, if you can see in my, in my image. Uh, we were just, uh, we were in Paris in the beginning of the year and we went to that house. Yeah, I had a chance to visit Paris when I was in, in college as an architecture student, and we made a trip out to Phyllis Savoie. I, I know exactly where you were when you were standing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they, they probably still haven't mowed the lawn since you were there, by the way. That's hilarious. It is so iconic, isn't it? So iconic. It's incredible. And so, so here what I can do with the tape measure tool, if you don't know this trick already, it's a fun one, but with SketchUp's tape measure tool, you can measure the distance between two things. And here I'm doing that again, just by dragging the pencil from mm -hmm. point one to point two. And then from the measurements box, I have the option to tell SketchUp what that distance should be. It's, it's registering as 123 centimeters. I can tell SketchUp, well, actually, uh, and this is just a total spitball. I don't know the answer, obviously, but I'm just going to say that it's 10 feet. So we'll type 10 feet and hit enter. And SketchUp asks if we want to resize the entire model based on that one now known dimension. And if I say yes, the floor plan will resize so that the distance between those two columns is now 10 feet. Yeah, I love that. I was making a note. Can you just really quickly go back and show me how you brought up the measurement box? Because I am a huge fan of the tape measure tool. Mm -hmm. But I miss. I looked down at my page just for a second when you brought up that dimension box. Yeah, the measurements box... A couple options there for the measurements box. It's it's movable, but by default, the measurements box is going to follow the pencil as you're drawing with okay. with any tool. Yeah, pencil tool, rectangle tool, circle tool, push pull tool, move tool, rotate tool. Whatever. The measurements box is going to follow the pencil around on the screen. Right. And to interact with it, you just tap into it, and then type you know ten feet enter. Yeah. Yeah. and resize the model based on that one known dimension. The, uh, the other option, if you're kind of digging more of a desktop, laptop feel, for example, mm -hmm. and you want to take your iPad and attach it to your Magic Keyboard and begin working in a way where it's really more laptop mode, mm -hmm. you have the option to take that measurements box and drag it up and dock it to the screen, and it'll just stay docked a little bit more like what's going on in SketchUp Desktop, for example. Mm -hmm. And now if you come over, say, with your mouse and you measure from point to point, 
instead of using the measurement or instead of tapping the measurements box, you can use the keyboard to type 10 feet enter. Yeah. And SketchUp will ask you the same thing. So Is Apple that... Pencil, multi touch, mouse and keyboard, whatever yeah. works. We've we've provisioned for and accounted for and offer users the ability to use whatever setup they prefer. That's great. And, and even though you put in 10 feet and it had told you it was 112 centimeters, will it change the unit of measurement from centimeter to inches or? Uh... It, it will. So the measurements box can accept units in any format. Okay. Right? Everything that we do in SketchUp is all at one to one scale. Right. And so whether I tell SketchUp that the distance between these two columns is 10 feet or however many centimeters or however many meters that is, three point something meters, it's all still one-to-one -one scale. You just tell SketchUp how big it is and it'll make it that big. The, de the default unit that shows up in the measurement box is gonna be based on whatever your unit preferences are that you've established in model info. Okay. So under model info, you have the option to choose your preferred default units, whether it be fractional inches, decimal feet and in inches, decimal inches, millimeter, centimeter, meter, or architectural sort of foot and inch combo units. That from the list and creating a new file, SketchUp will remember those, those preferences. And so now you can see in the measurements box, I'm getting measurements that are being displayed in terms of feet and inch units. A big complaint that we hear from contractors and things that we work with, uh, they, they see sometimes a, a measurement show up as uh, 930 seconds and they're like mm -hmm. yeah, these people have no idea what they're doing right is yep. there a way to, to limit um, sketchup limit how small it'll go absolutely yeah so that is another option under model info where you see this drop down for precision uh, perfect. and so right now I have the level of precision set to a quarter of an inch okay and because of that if I were to take something like SketchUp's tape measure tool, or perhaps better yet, something like SketchUp's dimension tool, and then look to go in and dimension the distance between those two columns. Mm -hmm. You can see in this case, SketchUp is rounding to the nearest quarter of an inch. Okay. So we could set that to maybe something a little more precise, like an eighth. Once we get to a sixteenth, that's probably when the contractor is going to start laughing at us, right? <laughs> so. right. <laughs> yeah. And what if you set it to an inch? Will it just snap to 10 feet and that'll be it? Or, well, there's or... two different things to keep in mind here. One is precision. Yeah. Right. And so to your point, yes, it's rounding now to the nearest inch and it's giving yeah. us 10 yeah. feet. Yeah. But the other thing is snapping. So precision and snapping, two slightly different things. Okay. One, one thing affects the display of units, either in SketchUp's measurements box while you're drawing and or it affects the way in which dimensions and other kinds of text are automatically displayed in mm -hmm. the SketchUp model. The other thing is length snapping. And so we have the option to turn length snapping on or off, and that will affect I see. Okay. All, all tools. So when I'm now push-pulling this with the push-pull tool, you can see it's it's snapping to the nearest inch while I'm pushing. That's pulling. really interesting. Now, can I can I get it to snap to the nearest three inches or something like that? That is not an option. Okay. Yeah. Because I know when when you're in concept design and if you're you know if you're doing a large building, um, sometimes you only need like the nearest three or four inches when you're first just trying to figure out you know the overall dimensions of a project and for sure you know if you're in the for ballpark. Sure. So that would be an interesting feature. But anyway, this is all fantastic so far. Okay, so let's come in here real quick. Let's draw ourselves a column. Sort of a crucial element of the design here. So we'll come in, we'll draw a column. And it looks like maybe, yeah, three inch radius or six inch diameter column should work for us. And we'll pull this up, say, I don't know, 10 feet, 12 feet. Let's go 10 feet for starters. 
take the select tool, triple tap on it, just a quick triple tap uh -huh. for select all right. If you if, if that wasn't a trick you're familiar with, it's a single tap to select a face or an edge. It's a double tap on a face to get the face and all of its edges, or it's a triple tap to get all the connected geometry. That's and great. then we can come down to the context toolbar where we have the tool button for make component. And we can give this component a name, tap create. And now we can take the move tool and enter move copy mode. Mm -hmm. And move a copy of that column over along the green axis, distance of 10 feet, enter. And we'll type 5x, enter to get a copy array. Looks mm -hmm. like that was too many. We'll go with 4x. <laughs> I've always loved that feature, by the way. Yeah, that's a good one. Especially the divide by two, you know? Yep. We'll do that next. How's that? So here, here we'll come in now with. SketchUp's new lasso select tool. And with lasso select, it's just a quick Ooh. little lasso there to get all of those jibber jabbers. And we can come in with move tool again, go into copy mode. This time we'll make a copy all the way down the end to your point. We'll go 40 feet out. And then we'll go three forward slash enter or four forward slash enter. Yes. And take the eraser tool and scrub over the ones here in the middle. Whoops. Too much there. Oh, so that is the eraser tool. <laughs> it is. I was struggling with that the other day. Yeah, we got rid of our long loved pinky eraser and we replaced it with a Stadler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. If you'd rather learn SketchUp for iPad in a step-by-step -step online course, there's a link to an information page and a free gift waiting for you in the description below. In the meantime, the video on the left is for you Morfolio Trace fans showing how SketchUp works with Morfolio Shadowmaker, and the video on the right is for you Procreate fans showing you a great way to combine SketchUp and Procreate to make quick, sexy renderings that sell your ideas every time. See you in the next video.